Maybe if you want to be remembered in this prayer Labda for whatever kama, reason, whatever need. Labda kama unataka kukumbuka katika maombi haya, sababu yoyote, shauku yoyote, hitaji lolote. You just believe in your heart and lift up your hand. Wewe amini maoni mwako na uinue mkono wako as we pray. Wakati tunavyoomba. Dear heavenly Father, mpendwa <coughs> baba wa mbinguni, we are thankful for being here again. Tunashukuru kwa kuwepo mahali hapa tena. And we know we are here by your own divine leadership. Nasi tunajua tuko hapa kwa uongozi wako wa kiungo. Lord, you promised to be with us. Bwana uliahidi kuwa pamoja nasi. That we never we gather together. Na mara zote tutakapokutana pamoja. We pray that God you'll come down again this day. Tunaomba Bwana utakuja chini tena siku ya leo. And be with us. Na utakuwa pamoja nasi. Anoint us in a special way God na ututie mafuta katika namna ya maalum for you know how limited and how weak man is always kwa sababu unajua jinsi ambavyo tuna kikomo na jinsi tulivyo dhaifu but lord you but always begin from where we end lakini bwana wewe unaanza pale tunapoishia so we pray that god will do the same this day tunaomba bwana utafanya vile vile tena leo and be the very blessing that your children are looking for na uwapatie shauku wale wa, uh, shauku zao watoto wanazozitazamia. The Lord you bless us with your princess. Na Bwana utatubariki na uwepo wako. And bless the reading of your word. Na ubariki kusoma kwa neno lako. In Jesus name we pray. Kwa jina la Yesu tunaomba. Amen. Amen. Just want to pick up something on a follow up of what we were sharing last evening. Na ingependa kutuchukue jambo fulani kwenye litakalofuatia kile ambacho tulishiriki jioni iliyopita. And we are reading in the book of Numbers chapter 36. Na tunasoma katika kitabu cha Hesabu sura 36. And I'm picking from verse 7. Nami na nitachukua kutoka katika mstari wa saba So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe for every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers Hivyo hapana urithi wote wa wana wa Israeli utakaotoka kabila hili kwenda kabila hili kwa kuwa wana wa Israeli watashikamana kila mtu na urithi wa kabila la baba zake And I want to read Proverbs chapter 23 Nami nataka kusoma methali uh, sura ya 33 uh, just speaking some two verses here in verse 22 and 23 says nikichukua mistali miwili mstari wa 22 na 23 anasema how can unto thy father that begat thee and despise not thy mother when she's old msikilize baba yako aliyekuzaa wala usimdharau mama yako akiwa mzee By the truth and sell it not also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Inunue kweli usiuze nam hekima na mafundisho na ufahamu. May God bless his word. Mungu na abariki neno lake. Bless you may be seated. Na nyie mnaweza uh, mkaketi. As you know we started yesterday. Na kama mnavyofahamu tulianza jana and we are talking about faithful stewards of their father's priceless heritage nasi tukao tukizungumza kuhusu watumishi wa aminifu wa urithi wa baba yao usionunulika and we are looking at naboth na tulikuwa tukimtazama naboth how that he lived in the days of elijah kwamba aliishi katika siku za elia Okay, let's, let's call it the minister of Elijah. Hebu tuishi tu, tuite siri ya Elia. Huduma ya Elia. Just like we are living in the days of the ministry of Elijah. Kama tu tunavyoishi katika siku ya huduma ya Elijah, ya Elia. Of course we are now in the anointing of Elisha. Kwa ndio hivyo kwamba tupo katika upako wa Elisha. And Elisha is not some big great brother somewhere. Na Elisha sio ndugu mfulani mkubwa mahali fulani. Elisha is the bride. Elisha ni bibi harusi. It's God in his bride everywhere. Ni Mungu ndani ya bibi harusi wake kila mahali. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. But we were looking at this 
great thing happening that Ahab desires to have the vineyard of Naboth kwamba Ahabu alikuwa anatamani kuwa na shamba la mzabibu la Naboth and we know that there was a reason why and we nini. found out that one of the reasons was because it was very close to his house and secondly Na ya pili, he wanted it to change it from being a vineyard to a habiyad na alitaka kuibadilisha kutoka kuwa shamba la mzabibu na kuwa shamba la mitishamba au bustani ya mitishamba you see and, and, and that was really something that was very strong na, na hilo lilikuwa ni jambo fulani ambalo lilikuwa na nguvu kweli kweli that god who, who gave you the word kwamba mungu aliyekupatia wewe neno to be your healer liwe mponyaji wako the devil doesn't want that at all na shetani hataki hilo kabisa and we found out yesterday na tukakuta kwamba jana the vineyard is jesus kwamba lile shamba la mzabibu ni yesu i am the vine jesus alisema mimi ndiye mzabibu and you are the branches na ninyi ni matawi ndani yangu and my father is the husband man na baba yangu ndiye mkulima so the vine kwa hiyo mzabibu that the, devil, that the devil wanted to destroy kwamba mzabibu ule ambao shetani alitaka kuharibu was Jesus Christ himself. ilikuwa ni Yesu Kristo mwenyewe so that he takes away the word ili kwamba aondoe neno takes away Jesus aondoe Yesu and replaces it with herbs na abadilishe na mitishamba for their research kwa ajili ya utafiti wake the herbal research center sehemu ya utafiti wa mitishamba Satan is really you know sometimes he has wicked moves you know Unajua shetani wakati mwingine ana njia ovu unajua But we found God na tukakuta kwamba that he landed on the wrong person Ali alimkuta mtu asiyemtegemea The man with the revelation of who he is Ambaye alikuwa na ufunuo wa yeye ni nani? And what God has given him? Na kile Mungu alichompa. And he the man who knew I am here to keep the word. Na mtu aliyejua kwamba yuko hapo kuwe, kulitunza neno. Because as we read in the book of Numbers. Kwa sababu kama tulivyosoma katika kitabu cha It was kitabu, written iliandikwa that the inherit inheritance from your father. Kwamba urithi wa baba kutoka kwa baba zako. Should not move from tribe to tribe. Haipaswi kuondoka kutoka kabila hili kwenda kabila lingine. From man to man. Kutoka katika mtu huyu kwenda mtu huyu. It is only to your children ni kwa ajili ya watoto wako glory to god utukufu kwa mungu and that's why hiyo ndio sababu the reality of god is promise uhalisia wa ahadi ya mungu does not just go to any denomination haiendi kwa dhehebu lolote tu it goes only to the children of god inakwenda tu kwa watoto wa mungu it goes to those who are in god's mind inakwenda tu kwa wale waliokuwa katika nia ya mungu who are in the attributes of god waliokuwa katika sifa za Mungu and i've always said this na mara zote nimesema hivi that i don't even travel to any country na mimi sisafiri katika nchi yoyote looking for friends kutafuta marafiki no hapana because friends that you look for are very expensive to maintain kwa, kwa sababu wale marafiki unaowatafuta ni wa gharama sana kuwashikilia Keeping friends is not easy. Kutunza urafiki au marafiki si rahisi. But if I am a manifested son of God. Lakini kama mimi ni mwana wa Mungu aliyedhihirishwa, all the children of God will automatically be my friends. Watoto wote wa Mungu watakuwa ki moja kwa moja rafiki zangu. But why? Kwa nini? You cannot help it. Uwezi kulisaidia hilo. If you are, if you are an attribute in our father. Kama wewe ni chembe sifa ndani ya baba. And I was an attribute there. Nami nilikuwa chembe sifa kule. We were friends before we came here. Tulikuwa marafiki kabla hatujaja hapa. We prayed, we worshiped together. Tuliabudu pamoja. We shouted together. Tulipiga kelele pamoja. We praised God together. Tulisifu Mungu pamoja. We were in him. Tulikuwa ndani yake. So when we come here, kwa tunapokuja hapa, we can easily recognize one another. Tunaweza kutambuana mmoja kwa mwingine. 
Because we were in him. But friends that you look for. They may even want you to compromise on the word. They may even tell you change here, tune here. Wata kuambia badilisha hapa, geuza hapa, rekebisha. Mm. Mm. But the attributes of God, lakini chembe sifa za Mungu, they will come upon one another. Wata kuja juu ya mmoja kwa mwingine. And this is the time, na huu ni wakati, not for the fellowship of the right hand. Sio kwa ajili ya ushirika wa wa mtu wa kulia, wa mkono wa kulia. God bless you brother, God bless you. Mungu akubariki. I love you brother. Nakupenda ndugu. When sometimes he doesn't even love you. Wakati mwingine hata hakupendi. <laughs> But it's the fellowship of the attributes. Lakini ni ushirika wa sifa. God bringing together his thoughts. Mungu akileta pamoja kundi lake. And God doesn't have grandchildren. Kwa sababu Mungu hana wajukuu. He has got children. Ana watoto wa Mungu. In every age. Katika kila kizazi. And his children, na watoto wake, they know the will of their father. Wanajua mapenzi ya baba yao. And they are here, na wako hapa, to live for that will of their father. kwa ajili ya hiyo hayo mapenzi ya baba. They don't fear anything else. Hawaogopi chochote kile. They fear their father. Wanaogopa baba yao. They tremble at the word of God. Wana heshima neno la Mungu. And those are the people, hao ndio watu, that the devil is scared of. Wak, but wherever they are kwamba, popote walipo, they know who they are and they know what they have in many cases katika namna nyingi, Satan doesn't want you to know that you have something he always tells you what you don't have but he will never tell you what you have lakini hawezi kukwambia kile ulichonacho It takes the spirit of God inahitaji roho wa Mungu to reveal to you what you have kukufunulia kile ulichonacho And when the devil is interested in what you have na shetani anapovutiwa na kile ulichonacho he wants to talk about it in a belittling manner anataka kukinenea katika namna ya kukishusha and to tell you that what he will give you is better than what he ha, you have na kukwambia kwamba kile atakachokupatia ni bora kuliko kile ambacho ulichonacho mhm mhm that's why the bible says hiyo ndio sababu biblia inasema he that hath yeye aliye na kitu more shall be given to him zaidi itaongezewa kwake but he that has not lakini yule asiyekuwa na kitu they shall take away from him that which he has watamnyanganya hata kile alichonacho so the devil will always come and tell you you have nothing kwa shetani atakuja mara zote kukwambia huna kitu or if you have something oh kama unacho kitu fulani it's not better than what he wants to give you atasema sio bora kuliko na kile anachotaka but he knows it is always better lakini anajua kwamba hicho ulichonacho ni so it is bora. very important koni muhimu sana to know what you have kujua kile ulichonacho is very important ni muhimu sana to know the treasure that is in this earthen vessels kujua ile thamani iliyo katika chombo hiki cha udongo we have a hidden treasure tunayo thamani iliyofichika in this earthen vessels katika hiki chombo cha udongo that the devil is looking for ambao shetani anakitafuta very important muhimu sana very priceless hakina kicha thamani kuu and the devil knows na shetani anajua if you don't know it by revelation kama ukijui hicho kwa ufunuo you can be willing to exchange it unaweza uka, ukawa uka, ukawa radhi kukibadilisha but if you know it by revelation lakini kama unajua kwa ufunuo you will not exchange it uwezi kubadilishana hicho now sasa let's first of all look exactly at this vinea sasa hebu tutazame hasa kuhusu hili shamba la mzabibu Yesterday we touched a little bit of it. Jana tuligusa kidogo kuihusu. And we knew that it's a vine. Na tukajua kwamba ni mzabibu. And we knew that the vine is Jesus Christ. Na tukajua kwamba mzabibu ni Yesu Kristo. And then the devil wants to take away the life of Jesus from you. 
na shetani anataka kuondoa maisha ya Kristo na ya Yesu ndani yako and he turns you into something else na nakwambia ufanye jambo fulani lingine that's why you you are looking at churches today ndio sababu unatazama makanisa leo message churches today makanisa ya ujumbe leo there is a lot of death going around kuna wingi wa kifo unaendelea sasa there is a lot of cooling down kuna wingi wa kupoa unaendelea people are look, lacking the interest in the word watu wanakosa shauku katika neno satan is battering the church Satan anapiga kanisa. Why? Kwa nini? Because he knows every other denomination is dead. Kwa sababu anajua dhehebu madhehebu mengine yote yamekufa. Life is only in the word. Uzima uko katika neno tu. And the word, the message is where life is. Na katika neno ujumbe ndio maisha yako. That's why all the demon the demons in the world. Ndio maana mapepo yote ya ulimwengu. And I'm targeting this message. Yanalenga ujumbe huu. Because this is where life is still there. Kwa sababu hapa ndipo uzima bado upo. And if we are not careful. Na kama tuko makini, you can die without knowing I'm dying. Unaweza ukafa bila kujua kama unakufa. Because kwa sababu death goes where life is. Kifo kinakwenda pale uzima ulipo. Death kifo doesn't go where death is. Hakiendi pahali kuna kifo. So because the denominations are dead, kwa sababu madhehebu yamekufa, the devil no longer goes there. Shetani haendi tena kule. That's why there is a lot of wars and confusion in the message. Ndio maana kuna vita vingi na mchafuko katika ujumbe. And there is something na kuna jambo that the devil fly, doesn't want you to be. Ambalo shetani hataki uwe. He can allow you to be a message believer. Unaweza kukuruhusu uwe mwamini wa ujumbe. You can get baptized in Jesus name. Unaweza ukabatizwa katika jina la Yesu Kristo. You can do all these elementary. Unaweza kufanya haya mambo yote ya kimsingi. But don't you become that. Lakini usiwe hicho. Don't you become that. Usiwe kile. And because I am here, ni kwa sababu niko hapa to fully manifest the will of my father. Kudhihirisha hakika lile. And that's why you are here. Baba, that's why you have come here. Ndio sababu umekuja hapa. I want us to look at those areas today. Nataka tutazame hizo sehemu leo. What is that? Hicho ni nini? That the devil doesn't want you to come to. Ambacho shetani hataki wewe ukijie. What is that? Hicho ni nini? That hurts the devil so bad. Ambacho kinamkwaza ibilisi sana. Until he cannot have peace. Hata hawezi kuwa na amani. What is that vineyard? Hicho shamba la mzabibu ni nini? That makes Ahab refuse to eat. Ambacho kinamfanya Ahab aache kula. And doesn't want to sleep. Hataki kulala. He doesn't want to talk with anybody. Hataki kuongea na mtu yote. He's very annoyed. Ame huzunika sana. Because kwa ni, kwa sababu, you have refused to give it to him. Kwa sababu umekataa kumpatia hicho. What is that? Hicho ni nini? What is that mystery? Hiyo siri ni nini? That it will make the devil so helpless. Ama itamfanya shetani asiwe na nguvu. That will make the devil so powerless. Itamfanya shetani awe dhaifu sana. What is that? Hicho ni nini? What is that reality? Huo uhalisia ni nini? That God has put in you. Ama Mungu ameweka ndani yako. And what is that point? Na hiyo point ni nini? That God wants you to come to. Ambo Mungu anataka wewe uifikie. Don't just be there a message believer. Uswa. Usiwe tu hapa mwamini wa ujumbe basi. You should know. Lazima ujue. I am a message believer to what? Nimeamini mimi ni mwamini wa ujumbe kwa nini? What should I come to? Lazima nifikie ni, 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 ni nini? What is that point? Hiyo, hiyo nukta ni ipi? The boiling point that the devil cannot stand. Ile nu, nukta ya, kuch, ya, ya ya juu ya kuchemka ambao shetani hawezi kuhimili. And I want to become that. Nataka kufikia hiyo. No, I don't want to be a make believer. Oh, hapana, sitaki kuwa mwamini wa I don't want to be an unbeliever claiming to be a believer. Sitaki kuwa asiamini anayedai kuwa mwamini. I don't be want to be an escort of believers. Sitaki kuwa msindikizaji wa mwamini. I want to be the believer. Nataka kuwa mwamini wa. And who is the believer? Mwamini ni nani? Jesus in you. Yes, 
ndani yako the holy ghost in you roho mtakatifu ndani yako you are not the believer wewe si muamini is god in him god himself in you ni mungu ndio mwanyo ndani yake that's why the bible says ndio maana biblia inasema the faith we have imani tuliyonayo is not our faith si imani yetu is the faith of jesus christ ni imani ya yesu kristo jesus christ himself yesu kristo mwenyewe in you ndani yako believing his word katika neno la akiamini neno feeling his word akitimiza neno lake obeying his word akitii neno lake manifesting his word akidhihirisha neno lake now sasa let's look at this what the prophet says tutazame katika hili kile nabii anasema only the children he said watoto pekee alisema it will only be the children whose hearts will be turned ni watoto pekee ambao mioyo yao itageuzwa It's only the children who will listen. Ni watoto pekee watakaosikia. In the days of Ahab, katika siku za Ahabu, only 7000 true seed Israelites were found. Ni mbegu za uh, saba za Waisraeli wa kweli zilizopatikana. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. I want us to look at this. Nataka tutazame katika hili. When you come to something that Satan unapokuja kwa jambo fulani ambalo shetani anachukia that can make Ahab roll on his bed itakomfanya Ahabu apinduke pinduke kwenye kitanda chake refuse fellowship refuse food akatai ushirika akatai chakula akatai kila kitu we want to look at that today tunataka tutazame hilo leo So when the true church begins to manifest that wakati kanisa la kweli likianza kudhihirisha hilo that will be the climax of the ministry of the bride hicho kitakuwa kilele cha huduma ya bibi harusi i want us to look at particular two things this morning nataka tutazame mambo mawili hasa and some of you friends who are sleeping i have sympathize with you na wale baadhi ya marafiki mnaolala ninawahurumieni sana The devil is telling you please sleep sleep Shetani anakuambia tafadhali lala lala Because he doesn't want you to get this Ma, kwa sababu hataki upate hii So if you are going to sleep I'll tell the deacons to bring a mat for you and you, you sleep here on on a Have a very good holy sleep here. Kama ulikitaka kulala nitawaambia mashemasi wa kupatie godoro ulale hapa sehemu ya, ya utakatifu kabisa hapa. Usingizi mtakatifu. I think that one will be a good sleep for you, isn't it? Huo utakuwa ni usingizi mzuri kwako. Let's look at one thing. Hebu tutazame jambo moja. What really hurts the devil? Kile hasa kinamkwaza ibilisi. Yeah the prophet says. Hapa nabii anasema. All right. Oh, ja, sawa, vema. Here was voices. Hapa kulikuwaepo na sauti. Oh, how we need in Jeffersonville thousands of lively voices. Oh, jinsi tunahitaji hapa Jeffersonville maelfu ya sauti zilizoishiwa. The thunder of God. Ngurumo ya Mungu. Thundering out in sweetness. Ikiunguruma katika utamu. And holiness na utakatifu sweetness utam holiness utakatifu purity usafi and defiled lives maisha yasiyogoshiwa walking around in the earth today yakitembea kuzunguka not in heaven sio mbinguni hapa and defiled lives maisha yasiyogoshiwa brother sister ndugu dada until you come to that mpaka umekuja kwenye hii you are still making the devil comfortable bado unamfanya ibilisi ajisikie huru the devil doesn't care that you are there shetani hajali kwamba uko pale your vineyard is not a threat to him ile shamba lako la mzabibu si hatari kwake but when the vine begins to produce the wine lakini ule mzabibu unapoanza kuleta divai the fruit matunda the manifestation of the reality of the intention u madhirisho ya uhalisia wa, wa kusudi he says anasema the thunder of god thundering out in sweetness 
ni nguruma ya Mungu ikiunguruma katika utamu holiness utakatifu purity usafi and defiled lives maisha yasiyochafuliwa walking around in the earth today yakitembea kuzunguka dunia leo without a blemish bila laumu yes sir ndio bwana real christians wa kristo halisi that is the thunder against the enemy hiyo ndio ngurumo dhidi ya adui now listen sasa sikia the vine has that the devil doesn't care about ule mzabibu ambao shamba ambalo shetani halijali au haogopi he says anasema the devil doesn't care how loud you can holler shetani hajali jinsi gani kwa sauti unaweza ukashangilia uka, uka, uka the devil does, don't care how much you can jump shetani hajali vile unaweza kuruka you can do this or shout au kufanya hili au kupanza sauti now listen sasa sikia but what hurts the devil lakini kile kinamkwaza shetani ah. mm. and i want that which hurts the devil nami nataka hicho kinachomkwaza shetani <laughs> when the devil is hurt wakati shetani amekwazika that means god is very happy hiyo inamaanisha shetani uh, mungu anafuraha sana when the devil is very hurt wakati shetani amechukizwa sana that means god is very happy hiyo inamaanisha mungu anafuraha sana so let me look at that hebu tutazame katika hilo what hurts the devil kile kinamkwaza shetani is to see ni kuona that sanctified holy life ni kuona maisha hayo yaliyotakaswa matakatifu holy life maisha matakatifu what is a holy life maisha matakatifu ni nini when you become the temple of the holy person jesus christ unapokuwa hekalu la mtu mtakatifu yesu kristo not you who is holy sio wewe uliye but the holy spirit in you lakini roho mtakatifu ndani yako mhm mhm so What hurts the devil? Kwa kile kinamkwaza ibilisi is to see that sanctified holy life. Ni kuona hayo maisha matakatifu yaliyotakaswa. Consecrated to God. Yameweka wakfu kwa Mungu. Now listen. Sasa sikia. Say anything to him. Sema lolote kwake. Call him anything. Muite chochote. Abuse him, ridicule him. Muudhi, mkeme. Show me that Christian. Ni onyesha huyo Mkristo. Even if you abuse him hata kama ukimuuzi unaona chochote kumhusu what does the prophet say nabii anasema nini he is just as sweet as it can be yeye ni mtamu kwa kadri anavyoweza kuwa and he, and he moves right on na anaendelea moja kwa moja oh man oh jaman that throws him away hilo linamkimbiza mali it throws the devil away linamtupilia mbali he says that's the thunder that shakes the devil hiyo ndiyo ngurumo inayomtikisa shetani. The thunder of what? Ngurumo ya nini? God is own life. Maisha ya Mungu mwenyewe oozing out of you. Yaki in, yaki yakichomoza kutoka kwako. As I said yesterday, kama nilivyosema jana, the Naboth who na, died so that the, the, the heritage remains na both aliyekufa ili kwamba urithi ubaki so for you the inheritance to remain yours kwa kwa wewe ili urithi ubaki kuwa wako then you die that means ndipo unakufa hiyo inamaanisha so when you die unapokufa the prophetic word neno la kinabii preserves the inheritance linatunza ule urithi hallelujah hallelujah now sasa so it becomes a thunder against the devil inakuwa ngurumo dhidi ya shetani and the devil cannot come near it na shetani hawezi kuja karibu yake you come to a point inakuja kwenye wakati that you are not the one scared of the devil is the devil scared of you sio wewe unayemogopa shetani ni shetani anakuogopa wewe you are not the one running away from the enemy sio wewe unayemkimbia adui is the enemy running away from you ni adui akikukimbia You are not fearing which doctors and wizards. Huwezi kuogopa wachawi na waganga wa kienyeji. Which, which doctors and wizards are fearing. Lakini waganga wa kienyeji na wachawi wanakuogopa. When they meet you. Wanaku 
When they meet you, the power of God in you paralyzes. Glory to God and jams their network. And when you meet the sinners, demon possessed people. The power of God in you, the life of God in you. Just disorganizes them. Glory to God. That's one thing that the devil fears. And that's one thing that the devil doesn't want the true church to get a hold of. I'm going to shock you maybe today that the devil doesn't even fear when you are preaching the gospel. Doesn't even fear how popular you are. Whether you are international or national or regional, it doesn't even care. Can it be some little obscure brother in the village giving the devil head sleepless nights? And I was a can in Dugu Flani Kuria Kijijini and Ampatia Shetani Usiku Usiona Usingizi. Those are the people the devil is scared of. They are dead to themselves. They are dead to the world. They surround you. They are so much in faith that they are unconscious of the surrounding. And the prophet says, real genuine faith is unconscious. Imani alisia kweli haitambuya. It doesn't even care what is around it. It has gone only one fixation. What has thou got me to do? What do you want me to do? What am I here for? What are you revealing again to me, Lord? They are looking at one thing. Fulfilling the will of God in their lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I want us to look at something. Coming to that point that I have just said. Sometimes when we are ministers wakati sisi wa hudumu or believers au aminio we get so excited tuna changamka sana sisimkwa sana that our church has many people kwamba kanisa letu lina watu wengi we have got musical instruments tuna vyombo vya muziki we have got good loud speakers tuna sauti za speaker kubwa we baptized so many people last sunday those things are very good. But they don't shake the devil. Let's look at this here. The prophet is talking about a woman here. He, he, he had prayed for. In the message, the power of God. He says, and she was standing there in that great faith. Not a make belief, but real faith. And he said, and a vision broke forth. I said, yes, you come from northern Texas. Texas ya, ya, ya kaskazini ni ya Lubok karibu na Lubok I said nikasema you brought her here in a yellow beauty car umemleta ume, umeletwa hapa katika gari zuri la njano coming along where there was half of the road which was concrete and the half other half was of tar na ukaja katika barabara ambayo nusu ilikuwa zege na nyingine ilikuwa moram I said you started to turn the corner and you were both laughing. Na ukaanza kukata kona na mnyote mlikuwa mkicheka. 
and you almost had a wretch na karibu mpate ajali the prophet is now discerning them as they came na nabi anawapambanua jinsi walivyokuja they almost had an accident kwamba karibu wapate ajali and she just screamed on the top of her voice na ukapiga kelele kwa she, sauti she, she, she screamed na alipiga kelele kwa sauti and i said na nikasema and thus says the lord hivi asema bwana she is healed ame amepona that's right hiyo ni kweli now listen what the prophet says sasa sikiliza kile nabii anasema and the next day na siku inayofuata she like had to set the whole town on fire kidogo aweke mji mkuu wote katika moto aweke moto hadi testimony of healing now ule ushuhuda wa uponyaji wake sasa she stirred the nest of the devil alitikisa kiota cha shetani what stirred the nest of the devil kitu gani kilitikisa kiota cha shetani now the prophet says nabii anasema let me tell you hebu niwaambie if you want the devil stirred up kama ukitaka shetani atikiswe ataharuka Just start preaching divine healing. Anza tu kuhubiri uponyaji wa kiungu. Not healing of miracles and signs and wonders. Si uponyaji wa miujiza na ishara na maajabu, but divine healing. Lakini uponyaji wa kiungu. That's, those are different things. Hayo ni mambo mawili tofauti. You a believer you don't get healed by a miracle. Wewe muaminio uponyi kwa muujiza. No. Hapana. It is an unbeliever who gets healed by a miracle. Ni yule asiamini anayepona kwa muujiza. But for you a believer, lakini kwako you are healed, healed by divine healing. Unaponywa kwa uponyaji wa kiungu. Because You claim you are promise. Kwa sababu unadai ahadi yako. And you receive it by faith. Na unaipokea kwa imani. You are the one. Wewe ndiye who activates the gift. Unaweza ukakifanya kipawa kifanye kazi. Because kwa sababu as far as the word is concerned. Kwa kadri ya neno ninavyohusika. You are already healed. Wewe umekwisha kupona. By his stripes kwa kupigwa kwake we are sisi tu pona not we will be sio tuta after prayer baada ya maombi but we are tayari tumepona so what prayer does kwa kile maombi yanafanya is to manifest your healing ni kudhihirisha uponyaji wako but the healing is already in you lakini uponyaji tayari uko ndani yako listen. <laughs> Sasa sikia. So if you want the devil stirred up, go come on attack a ibilisi atikiswe ataharuki. Just start preaching divine healing. Anza tu kuhubiri uponyaji wa kiungu. Now look at this. Sasa tazama hili. Peter, Petro preached on the day of Pentecost. Alihubiri katika siku ya Pentecost. And 3000 souls was saved. Na nafsi 1000 zikaokolewa and satan never even moved na shetani hata hakusogea Three thousand souls elfu tatu they are got saved zimeokolewa they are even baptized si hata baptizwa 120 watu 120 they were filled with the holy spirit They jumped and spoke in tongues. And the devil never left his bed. Hata shetani hakuamka kutoka kitandani. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. This is the prophet not me now. Huyu ni nabii sio mimi sasa. What do you say? Unasemaje hiyo? 3000 people have got saved. What of that you are okolewa and the devil doesn't even care. Na shetani hata hajali. 
People are filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues. Jumping up and down. The devil doesn't care. Satan is But listen. Lakini sikia. The devil Satan never even moved. Satan hata ku sogea. But a couple days afterwards. Lakini siku chache baadaye. When the same Peter healed the man at the gate. Hey 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 hey. Hey hey hey. Hey hey. Aha. When the same Peter healed a man at the gate called Beautiful. Wakati Peter yule yule alipomponya mtu katika ile lango linaitwa Wanulem Wanulem man. Mtu mmoja kiwete mmoja. When he walked, alipotembea, all hell turned loose. Kuzimu yote ikaachiliwa. All hell Kuzimu yote that's, that's when persecution started Hapo ndipo mateso yalianza That's when they were arrested Hapo ndipo That's when they were beaten That's when they were imprisoned Hapo ndipo waliweka gerezani That was the spark for Hi, persecution Hipo hicho ilikuwa ni ile cheche kwa ajili ya majira Not 3000 getting saved Sio what sio nafsi 3000 zisokolewa Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm uh -huh. uh -huh. You know why? The prophet brings out the reason. Nabii analeta sababu. He says that's right. Hiyo ni kweli. The devil don't like to see God display his power. Shetani hapendi kuona Mungu akionyesha nguvu zake. He doesn't want to see hataki kuona a thunder that that is thundering out hataki kuona ngurumo inaonguruma nje the life of the word in you maisha ya neno ndani yako the proof of his resurrection in you uthibitisho wa ufufuko wake ndani yako kwa nini because the first resurrection kwa sababu ufufuko wa kwanza the denomination is convinced the people wale madhehebu waliwashawishi watu that he didn't resurrect kwamba hakufufuka his people just came and stole the body at night kwamba hao watu walikuja wakaiba mwili wake that man didn't resurrect yule mtu hakufufuka the disciples hired some some mercenaries and they came and stole the body kwamba wale wale wanafunzi walikuja wakaiba ule mwili so they convinced the people kwa wakaenda wakawashawishi watu but now when the same works that Jesus did kazi zile zile ambazo Yesu alifanya begin to be get manifested in the church ikianza kuonekana kanisani that becomes hilo linakuwa the undeniable proof of his resurrection uthibitisho usiopingika wa kufufuka kwake it becomes something inakuwa jambo fulani that the devil cannot deny ama shetani hawezi kataa and that's what they said na hicho ndicho alichosema they said what do we do tutafanya nini because truly kwa sababu kweli kweli a notable miracle u mujiza wa wa dhahiri has been done by these people umefanywa na hao watu and all of Jerusalem Jerusalem yo they know the man wanamjua huyu mtu all the people na watu wote they know that this man was lame wanamjua huyu mtu kwamba alikuwa kilema we cannot deny it hapo hawezi kukataa hiyo so the devil kwa shetani was rendered powerless ali ana asiye na nguvu now he had nothing to say sasa hana cha kusema when the life of Jesus is manifested in the church wakati uzima uhai wa Yesu ukithiririshwa kanisani the life maisha the nature asili and the power na nguvu the character the power the anointing tabia nguvu na upako that's why these days ndio maana siku hizi 
We can say we baptize 30 people. Tunaweza kusema tulibatiza watu 30. And you put that on a, on a WhatsApp forum. Na unaweka katika forum ya WhatsApp. And ministers try to put that every time I always look at and, and laugh, you know. Na 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 wahudumu wanaweka hiyo kila wakati na angalia na cheka tu. We baptized 50 people. Tulibatiza watu 300. Tulibatiza watu 300. Tulifanya hiki. The devil doesn't even move out of his bed. Shetani hata atembei kutoka kwenye kiti chake. Kwenye kitanda. Yeye yeah, yeye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very good. Let us preach the gospel. Ni, It's good for people to believe. That's why we preach the gospel. Ni nzuri, ni nzuri sana. Hebu tuhubiri injili. And it's one of the greatest miracles. Na, is na, to have a soul saved. Na uh, uh, muujiza mkuu wa wote ni kuwa na na nafsi iliyokolewa. But not everybody who goes to be baptized or who is prayed for is saved. Lakini sio kila mmoja alienda kubatizwa au aliombewa ameokolewa. If that is the case, kama hiyo ndio, we will have thousands and tens of thousands of believers. Tungekuwa na ma elf, kumi na ma elf ya waaminio. How many have we ever baptized? Wangapi tumebatiza? How many have come and said now pray for me? Wangapi wamekuja wakasema Bwana sasa niombe. But how many have become living thunders? Lakini wangapi wamekuwa ngurumo zinazoishi? How many? Wangapi? We have very good preachers, very good churches. Tunawahubiri wazuri, makanisa mazuri. But where is the life of the word? Lakini bado maisha ya neno. All these years we have preached and preached. Na kote hii tumehubiri na kuhubiri. Very good preachers. Wahubiri wazuri. Very good sermons. Mahubiri ma, ma, mazuri. Wonderful men of God. Wa, wa, watu wengi wa, wa, watu wengi wa Mungu. And you even go home testify. Na hata tukienda nyumbani tukishuhudia. The word was good. The word was good. Eh neno lilikuwa zuri, neno lilikuwa zuri. But where is the goodness of the word in you? Lakini uzuri wa neno ndani yako uko wapi? Where is that word? Neno lilikuwa wapi? The devil makes sure Shetani you don't become that word. Usiwe hilo neno. You just say I believe the word. Utasema I believe the word. I believe the message. I believe the message. Naamini ujumbe. What is the message? Ujumbe ni nini? The message is Jesus Christ. Ujumbe ni Yesu Kristo. That's why Malachi 4 was sent. Ndio maana Malaki ni alitumwa. To introduce you to Jesus. Kuku Tambulisha wewe kwa Kristo kwa Yesu. Now let me tell you. Sasa hebu nikwambie. The reason the devil is playing with us. Sababu shetani anacheza na sisi is because ni kwa sababu instead of receiving Jesus, badala ya kupokea Yesu, we ended of being church members. Tulishia kuwa washirika wa kanisa. That's why people are coming ndio maana watu wanakuja I am the eighth messenger mimi, I am this Mimi ni mtume wa nane mimi ni hiki And people are beginning to look for men Na watu wanaanza kutazama watu kutafuta watu Because they failed to receive Jesus Kwa sababu walishindwa kumta kumpokea Yesu This message Ujumbe connects you with your husband Unakuunganisha wewe na mumeo Connects you with Jesus Unakuunganisha wewe na Yesu And you don't rest na usipumzike. Don't rest. Usipumzike. Don't be deceived. Usidanganyike. Until you get him. Mpaka umempata. You have to be like Naboth. Lazima uwe kama Naboth. And say Lord let me die. Unasema Bwana acha nife. Until he comes here. Kaache kwa. I want him here. Nataka hapa. I don't just want to hear the word. Sitaki tu kusikia neno. I want him. I want him. Namtaka yeye. Nothing less. Hakuna chochote. I become that word. Niwe hilo neno. What was in the pages of the Bible? Hilo ne hilo neno la Biblia linalojitegemea. Becomes written here. Liandikwe hapa. What was in the tapes and books? Kile kilichokuwa katika kanga na kitabu. Becomes written here. Kiandikwe hapa. When it's written here. Kile wakati inapoandikwa hapa. The devil now will have nothing to do with me. Shetani hakuna chochote. 
I will have overcome everything. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, you are not even going to be looking for prayers. No. You are going to be a manifested God. Because God produces God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when you become a God The word of God manifested And the word Is manifested In the flesh And when the flesh is sick The word is the healer Hallelujah Glory to God that's where we have to come to. Not looking for anointed men. But becoming the anointed bride. The anointed word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the thunder. When you come to that point Even if you are one person in Dar es Salaam The devil is not going to settle Even if you are one person here Glory to God The devil doesn't want to see God display his power the first point of God is showing his power is when he can prove to the devil that he has saved you and saved you completely that you are completely his kabisa Mm. And that you yourself you know I am not 75% saved Mimi si asilimia sabina tano ni meokolewa O naite percent sa Awa asilimia tisini ni meokolewa O naite five percent sa Awa asilimia tisina tano ni meokolewa But I am one hundred percent saved Yakini asilimia miya moja I am for him Mimi ni wakake And he is for me Na yeye ni kwa ajiri yangu I am just his temple Mimi ni that's where we are going That's where we have to come to That's what the devil doesn't want you to become Yeah That's why Peter and the rest of the apostles they were in the temple They were preaching Jesus They were preaching They were eating They were breaking bread No one was concerned They were moving from house to house They were testifying about the word The devil didn't move 3,000 get saved The devil doesn't even turn in his bed No problem That is fine But I'm waiting for one thing If the day will come that I will see the life and the power of Jesus Displayed I cannot rest I will get out of my bed <laughs> Listen The devil Doesn't like to see God display his power Listen He thinks he has got a lot of power Anadhani ananguvu nyingi The devil thinks Shetani anadhani That he has got a lot of power Ananguvu nyingi But he has But he is finished Lakini yeye amekwisha Amen Amen When our Christ is predominant Wakati Christo wetu anamiliki So the prophet says Kwa hiyo nabia nasema Take the initiative Chukua utangulizi 
Don't wait for the devil to throw something on your lap. Usisubiri shetani aweke jambo fulani pajani mwako. Start the move. Anza msogeo. Possess the land. Umiliki nchi. Because your footstep is a possession. Kwa sababu hatua zako ndio mmiliki wako. Take the initiative. Chukua hatua. Attack him on his ground. Chukua hatua kwenye aanza ku 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 kukabi, kukabiri ardhi yake that's what that's what israel does hicho ndicho israel walifanya when you want to fight israel wali walipoanza kukitaka kupigana na israel they bring the war to your country wana let wanakuja kupigana nchini kwako they don't wait for you to attack them in their country hawa hawasubiri wewe uje nchini mwao <laughs> they fight in your own country wanapigana kwenye nchi yako mwenyewe they bring the war in your land wanaleta vita ardhini kwako not in their land si katika ardhi yao so if there is destruction kwa kama kuna uharibifu it will be in your country itakuwa katika nchi yako if it is what it will be in your country kama chaguo chochote ni katika nchi yako so i bring the war into your land wanaleta vita kwenye nchi yako not my land si kwenye nchi yangu because i'm abraham's seed of faith kwa sababu mimi ni mbegu ya ibrahimu ya imani what was the promise ahadi ilikuwa nini possess the gates of your enemy miliki lango la adui yay 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 go to his gates nenda kwenye malango yake don't wait for him to come on your gate usisubiri acha kwenye malango yako you go to his gate wewe nenda kwenye geti lake possess his gate miliki lango lake glory to god kufu kwa mungu Let me give you a second proof here. Hebu ni wape thibitisho la pili hapa. That was in the message the power of God. Ilikuwa katika ujumbe nguvu ya Mungu. Now we come to the message the acts of the Holy Spirit. Sasa tunakuja katika ujumbe matendo ya Roho Mtakatifu. He says, Anasema, now they were just having a great time. Sasa walikuwa na wakati mzuri. He said they just got Uh, kind of past, puffed up the w- apostles walipata tu namna ya ku they got puffed up the apostles w- walipata namna ya kujivuna wale wa mitume and so forth na kadhalika they had to do something about it walipaswa kufanya jambo fulani kuliuhusu off right off they went again moja kwa moja wakaenda tena just as as hard as they could go kwa kwa, kwa nguvu kama walivyoweza kwenda preaching the gospel ili njili Peter and John Yohana na Petro two ignorant unlearned men watu wawili wa jinga passed up through the gate called the beautiful man wakapita katika lango linaitwa mzuri now listen what the prophet says sasa sikia kile nabii anasema the devil said shetani akasema well now sasa tazama vema they are, they are just there outside they are preaching wako tu pale nje wakihubiri so it won't hurt anything Haiwezi kudhuru chochote. So even if you preach the thousand crusades the devil doesn't even get annoyed. Oh hata kama ukihubiri uh, makongamano elf shetani hata hashtuki. You are just preaching like anybody. Wewe unahubiri tu kama mtu yote. Mhm. Mhm. Then all these people believe in preaching everything oh ha watu wote waliamini katika kuhubiri chochote you are not the only person preaching pentecostals are preaching wewe si mtu peke yake unayehubiri pia pentecostal wanahubiri but there is one thing wanaubiri. they are all lacking in common lakini kuna kitu fulani wote wanakikosa pamoja they don't have the life of the one they preach hawana maisha ya yule wanayemhubiri so they never doesn't care kwa shetani hata hajali you preach wewe hubiri endelea na karere yenu hakuna shida okay mm. <laughs> blessed be the name of the lord jina la bwana libarikiwe continue endelea but when they 
passed through the gate called beautiful lakini walipopita katika ule mlango unaitwa mzuri there lay the man pale alilala mtu now listen sasa sikia the holy ghost said roho mtakatifu akasema now it was the spirit speaking to peter ilikuwa ni roho akinena na petro peter petro that man can be healed yule mtu anaweza kupona When he perceived he had faith to be healed. Alipotambua kwamba anayo imani ya kupona. He said stand up on your feet. Akasema simama juu ya miguu yako. Before he said stand up. Lakini aliposema inuka. You know what he said? Alisema inuka. Look at us. Alisema tutazame sisi. We are the manifested sons of God. Sisi ni wana wa Mungu aliyedhihirishwa. Fedha hatuna pesa hatuna Hey But look at us for what the others don't have Lakini tutazame sisi kwa kile ambacho wengine hawana Others wengine have what we don't have Wanacho kile ambacho hatuna But we also have Lakini sisi pia tunacho What they don't have Ambacho hawana Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. Stand up on your feet. Simama kwa miguu yako. And he picked him up. Na akamuinua. And he held him till his ankle bones received the strength. Akamuinua mpaka mifupa ya miguu yake ikapata nguvu. And away he went leaping and jumping and praising God. Na hapo akaenda akiluka na kumsifu Mungu. You know what? Unajua nini? That caused more trouble than all the preaching they have ever done. Hiyo ilisababisha shida kubwa kuliko mahubiri yote waliokuwa wameyafanya. He says, akasema, I tell you, nawaambieni, Peter preached a sermon on the day of Pentecost. Petro alihubiri ujumbe siku ya Pentecost. And 3000 souls were saved. Na nafsi 3000 zikaokolewa. The devil never even moved out of his bed. Shetani hata hakuamka kutoka kitandani kwake. That's right. Hiyo ni kweli. He says, "Or well, let them alone." Eh, vema waache waendelee. Waache waendelee na mahubiri. Hakuna wasiwasi. Oh. Can you imagine doing a service that the devil doesn't care? Unaweza ukawazia kufanya ibada ambayo shetani hata hajali. God help me not to be on that side. Mungu nisaidie nisiyo upande huo. I want to live a life. Nataka kuishi maisha that even when i just wake out of my sleep. Kwamba ninapoinuka tu kutoka kwenye usingizi wangu. Starts Shetani anaanza wondering what could be his next move. Anaanza kushanga je ataelekea wapi huyu? <laughs> okay. Oh, ndio sema. And he passed through the gate called beautiful. Ndipo akabila katika lango linaloitwa mzuri. And the next day, na siku inaofuata, and he healed a man. Akamponya mtu. Crippled from his mother's womb. Aliyekuwa kilema tangu tumboni mwa mama yake. And all hell turned loose on him. Na kuzimu yote ikamgeukia kwake. That's right. Hiyo ni kweli. They threw him in the jail and kept him there overnight. Mtupa kule gerezani yes, na kupanya put him into prison na kumweka katika gereza in the inner cell katika che, katika i, chumba cha ndani of the phenomenon kwa sababu ya kile ya kimiujiza the devil said shetani akasema i can't let this thing get started now siwezi kuruhusu hili jambo lianze sasa in healing uponyaji wa kiungu if they do that kama wakifanya hivyo They really will knock my props out from under me. Wata on, wata piga, wata ngoa, mazao yangu kutoka katika kutoka chini yangu. That's right. 
Uh, uh, Because I might fool with them around. Kwa, kidogo, with a little theology. Kwa, kwa theology ndogo, Once in a while. Mala moja, kidogo. But I sure can't fool that real thing that comes out. Lakini <laughs> siwezi kudanganya kwenye hicho kitu halisi kinachotokea And the people can see it being done. Na watu wanaweza wakaona kimefanyika. The devil tried to stop it. Shetani anajaribu kulikomesha. He never stopped it then. Hawezi kulikomesha kipindi kile. And he can't stop it now. Hawezi kulikomesha sasa. That's right. Hiyo ni kweli. The true vine mzabibu wa kweli that makes ahab uncomfortable inamfanya ahabu asi asi asipumzike asitulie we have to come to that tunapaswa tuje kwenye hilo blessed be the name of the lord jina la bwana libarikiwe and i want you to look at this na nataka mtazame katika hii that when a worship come from such a foundation wakati ibada inatoka kwenye msingi wa namna hiyo when there is such a church today such a believer today wakati kuna kanisa la namna hiyo leo muaminiwa wa namna hiyo leo it becomes a point of god's interest inakuwa sehemu ya matamanio ya Mungu and all heaven is around that na mbingu yote inazunguka hapo All the angels will be given the, the charge to look after that. Ni malaika tu watapewa kazi ya kutachunga hiyo. Because the prophet says, Kwa sababu nabii anasema, The devil doesn't want God to prove that he's the same yesterday today and forever. Shetani hataki Mungu athibitishe kwamba yeye ni yeye yule jana leo hata milele. He doesn't care. Hajali. When the church is a dead church. Kama kanisa limekufa, hajali. There's no wine. Hakuna Divine. There is no stimulation. Hakuna mchangamko. There is no worship. Hakuna ibada. Let me finalize with something here. Hebu nimalizie kwa jambo fulani hapa. You say you believe in God. Mnasema mnaamini katika Mungu. The devil also believes in God. Shetani pia anaamini katika Mungu. But the devil believe Lakini shetani haamini Mungu. Believing God is present it is. Ku amini Mungu ni katika wakati uliopo. Believing in God is some rhetoric, is something that everybody knows there is. Kuamini katika Mungu damu fulani dogo ambalo kila mtu anajua yupo. If you go back in Israel, kama ukirudi kule Israel, which tribe was designated to, to lead in war? Uh, kabila lipi lilikusudi lilichaguliwa kuongoza katika vita Judah Yo, Judah Why kwa nini Do you know why the, 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 why because the name Judah means praise Unajua kwa nini kwa sababu jina la anamaanisha sita na ibada Mhm mm Mm -hmm. Let's go here a little bit in the Bible and see. Hebu twende hapa kwenye Biblia na tuone. I'm just winding up. Ninamalizia tu. In 1 Samuel chapter 17. Katika kitabu cha Samuel uh, sura ya 17. Verse 1. Mstari wa kwanza. Now the Philistines gathered themselves together. I mean gathered together their armies uh, to battle and we gathered together at Shoko which belongeth to Judah. Wakati huo wafilisi walikuwa walikusanya majeshi yao kwa vita na wakakusanyika huko soko ulio mji wa Yuda. So when you talk about Goliath, kwa unaponena kuhusu Goliath, that worst enemy Israel ever had. Yule adui mbaya Israeli waliwahi kuwa naye. When he gathered his armies, alipokusanya majeshi yake the first place they landed and possessed belonged to Judah sehemu ya kwanza waliofika na kumiliki ilikuwa ni ya Yuda why kwa nini because Judah kwa sababu Yuda is praise and worship ni kusifu na kuabudu 
Hey. Hey. Do you know that sometimes you say I am praying to my God. Unajua wakati mwingine unasema ninaomba kwa Mungu wangu. But is he your God? Lakini ni je ni Mungu wako? When was he last your God? Lini ali ali ishia kuwa Mungu wako? Because what does Ala, God mean? Kwa sababu Mungu inamaanisha nini? An object of worship. Kitu cha kuabudiwa. So when did you last worship him? Mara ya mwisho lini kumwabudu? Because he's only God when you worship him. Kwa sababu yeye ni Mungu tu unapomwabudu. But if you stop worshiping him, lakini ukiacha kumwabudu, he will remain God but not your God. Atabaki Mungu lakini si Mungu wako. So I'll be say, "Eh Mungu, eh Mungu, Mungu wa nani?" Kwa hiyo utakuwa unasema Mungu, Mungu. Mungu wa nani? Ni Mungu wako kweli. Is he your God? Je, oh. ni Mungu wako? You are, you are calling on him as who? Unamwita yeye kama nani? <laughs> And that's why the devil Ndio sababu shetani you pastors you know Nyema nyewe wachungaji mnajua What the devil has killed in the church is praise and worship Kila shetani ameua kanisani ni iba kusifu na kuabudu That's the first place Goliath captures Hicho hiyo ndio sehemu ya kwanza Goliath ana alateka There is no wine to stimulate the church to worship. Hakuna divai ya kuchangamsha kanisa kuabudu. You have so many things in your thoughts. Unao mambo mengi mawazoni mwako. That when you even begin to sing, wakati unapoanza kuimba, nia yako imegawanyika. You no longer worship God from the bottom of your heart. Uabudu tena Mungu kutoka kilini cha moyo. Hata ukisema amina unasema tu hivyo tu. Si ndio mchungaji anataka nisema amina. Nimesema amina. Shida gani? Unasema tu hivyo tu. Kama ya ya kawaida. Something yuzo. Kit, kitu fulani cha kawaida. And you don't know that the devil has captured that area. Na hujui kama shetani ame ameteka hilo eneo. He begins by capturing the land of Judah. Alianza na ku teka nchi ya yuda that's what goliath does hicho ndio goriati anafanya he brings his demons there analeta mapepo yake pale in the land that belongs to judah katika nchi ambayo ni ya yuda and yet the children of israel na hata hivyo wana wa israel whenever they were going to fight walipokuwa na kwenda kupigana they would be led with the singers wange eongozwa na waimbaji That's when that's why ndio sababu whenever there was true worship and praise wakati kulikuwaapo na kuimba kwa kweli na kuabudu kwa kweli the israelites never fought wa israeli hawakupigana god always came down to fight mungu mwenyewe alikuja akapigana when jehoshaphat wakati jehoshaphat went to attack the enemy alipokwenda kumkabiri Adui. He never went with the soldiers. Hakwenda na wa, na, 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 na wanajesh. He got a good choir. Alipata kwaya nzuri. With the trumpets and cymbals and Ikiwa na tarumbeta na matali and they went singing and praising the Lord. Na walipoanza kuimba na kumsifu Mungu. And then God started fighting. Ndio Mungu akaanza kupigana. And God told him na Mungu akamwambia because you have got the revelation kwa sababu umepata ufunuo you shall not need to fight in this battle utahitaji kupigana kwenye vita hii the battle vita the battle will be mine vita vitakuwa vya kwangu the battle is now mine vita sasa ni vya kwangu so what the devil does kwa kile shetani anafanya he wants you to take away the vine anataka uondoe ile mzabibu that makes you get stimulated ama unakufanya upate changamko praise the lord kumsifu mungu to worship the lord kumabudu mungu and that is what makes god your god na kila ndio kinachomfanya mungu mungu wako the more you praise him 
kwa kadri unavyomwabudu the more you worship him vile kwa kadri unavyomwabudu the more he is your god ndio zaidi anazidi kuwa mungu wako otherwise kivingiravyo niliomba mungu niliomba mungu na hakunijibu mbona mungu gani which god did you pray M- mungu gani ulimuomba when do you worship him lini ulimwabudu do you worship him every morning je unamwabudu kila asubuhi do you praise him every day je unamsifu kila asubuhi kila siku do you wake up with prayer in the morning je unaabu unaamka katika maombi kila asubuhi Do you even sing when you are in your garden? Je, unapuaga unaimba hata unapokuwa bustanini kwako? Do you sing even when you are in your office? Je, unaimba hata unapokuwa ofisini kwako? How many times do you worship him? Mara ngapi unamwabudu? Because you don't have wine. Kwa sababu huna wine. And the devil is very happy that the vine the vine had is removed. Na shetani anafuraha sana kwamba shamba la mzabibu limeondolewa. The song leaders really suffer. Wale waongoza nyimbo wanapata shida sana. Even to tell you to clap. Hata kukwambia wewe kupiga makofi. This days we have made the machines to play music for us. Siku hizi tumetengeneza mashine zitucheze muziki kwa jili. And there is a way they are programmed and and then all you do is do this. Na kuna namna wameziweka vyote mnavyofanya ni kufanya tu hivi basi. Clapping is now a problem. Kupiga makofi sio shida. Sasa ni shida. Ni shida. People don't want to clap for the Lord. Lord. Watu hataki kupiga makofi kwa ajili ya Bwana. To lift up their hands like this. Kuinua mikono namna hii. They just want everything done for them. Wanataka kila kitu kifanywe kwa ajili yao. So they are enjoying but kwa, they are not praising. Kwa wanafurahia lakini hawasifu. They are just happy. Lakini wana furaha tu. So at home because there is no piano. Kwa sababu nyumbani hamna piano, hamna kinanda, you don't sing. Hamwimbi. Hey. No family altar. Hakuna madhabahu nyumbani. New brothers. Nio ndugu. Hey. Nio. Is this God? Still God in your home? Je, huyu Mungu bado ni Mungu nyumbani mwenu? Because kwa sababu you will need to call upon him in your house. Unahitaji kumwita juu kwenye nyumba zenu. When problems come there. Wakati shida zitakapopata. And you don't worship him in your house. Na mama mabudu nyumbani mwenu. You don't read the Bible. Hamsomi Biblia. You don't pray with your wives. Hamuombi na wake zenu. You don't pray with your children. Hamuombi na watoto wenu. You don't read the Bible. Hamsomi Biblia. You just go to bed. Na kwenda tu kulala. After talking politics. Baada ya kuongea siasa, some of them even watch football. Wengine hata wanatazama mpira. They support this team, they support that team. Wanashabikia timu hii na timu ile. And they don't even worship God. Na hawamwabudu hata Mungu. And you think namna zani you are going to call on a God you don't worship? Mtamwita Mungu msimwabudu. You are deceiving yourself. Mnajidanganya wenyewe. We better wake up. Ni bora muamke. Before it gets too late. Kabla kuja chelewa. Because that's what the devil is targeting. Kwa sababu hicho ndicho shetani analenga. He's having a powerless dead church. Ana kanisa lisilo na nguvu lilokufa. Now. Sasa. Do you know why all the trained men failed? Unajua kwa nini watu wote waliofunzwa wa Israeli walishindwa? All of them failed. What all is in? 39 days. Siku 39. Goliath was taking more land. Goliath alikuwa anachukua nchi zaidi. And they were going backward. Na walikuwa na because kwa sababu God was not the God. Kwa sababu Mungu hakuwa Mungu wao. God was not God. Mungu hakuwa Mungu wao tena. Who defeated the Goliath? Nani alimshinda Goliath? David the singer. Urudi mwimbaji. Glory. David. Daudi. 
the singer Mbaji David Daudi who can play the guitar Anaweza kucheza guitar Oh jamaa who can who knows how to worship God Baba anajua namna ya kumwabudu Mungu and he could worship him in the morning worship him in the at noon time worship him in the evening hmm. that's why he wrote hundreds of psalms so many songs and every time he could think about nothing but to praise the Lord to worship the Lord to thank God to lift him God that's what was in the mind of David and that's why when he came and looked at Goliath he said mbona huyu ni nani who is this one? Who you ni nani? Who is this one? Ni nani huyu? The way I know my God. Bila anavyomjua Mungu wangu. They know I worship him. Bila anavyomwabudu. I know him. Namjua mimi. I know him. Namjua yeye. I'm going to destroy him. Nitakwenda kumwaribu. Why? Kwa nini? Because he was in constant worship. Kwa sababu alikuwa anadum katika ibada getting revelation upon revelation and writing down songs songs of praise songs of worship and always in the spirit so when he came to look at Goliath he was wearing God's own goggles yay hey and he said just give me a chance give me a chance I'm going to deal with that man because God was his God God was his God what the devil does is he makes the church so stache so cold so dead even when they come in the church they are so far away from God let us get some wine today blessed be the name of the Lord let's get some wine Divine. Let the vineyard begin to produce. That is the church. That gets heaven on our lot. Heaven is always watching. Mbingu mara zote inatazama. When there is such a people. And that is a man who will not care about what the enemy is doing. He's so much in the spirit that he cannot see the muscles of Goliath. So much in the spirit that is not scared of cancer. So deep in the spirit and he says whom do you think this diabetes is whom do you think this asthma is what do you think this cancer is I have put on God's goggles I am looking at it. The way God looks at it. What is it? I am going to cut off its head. Today. 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 I'm going to cut off its head. 
Not tomorrow. Si kesho. Not next year. Si mwaka ujao. Not next month. Si mwezi ujao. Not next day. Si siku ijayo. Today. Lakini leo. He told Goliath. Kwa sababu Goliath. Today. Leo. Come, come, come. John, John, John. I'm going to cut off your head. Sikuwa na kukata kichwa chako. And he started running. Na kaanza kukimbia. Towards the devil. Kufuata shetani. He took the wall. Akachukua to the vita. devil's ground. <laughs> Akachukua vita kwenye ardhi ya ibilisi. Amen. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. So that's why the devil has made you so dull. Ndio maana shetani amekufanya uwe chini sana. You come to church? Unakuja kanisani? And you leave church? Na unaondoka kanisani? You have not prayed. Hujaomba. And you say we went to the house of prayer. Na unasema tulikwenda katika nyumba ya maombi. Who will pray for you? Nani atakuombea? A preachers become now Catholic fathers? Na una una wahubiri wamekuwa mapadri wa Katoliki? Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Mother of God. Maria, Mama wa Mungu. Pray for us, sinner. Utuombe sisi wakosefu. You come to church? Unakuja kanisani? The song leader opens with prayer. Na kiongozi wa nyimbo anawafungulia kwa maombi. After that one another one prays for prayer requests. Na baada hilo mtu mwingine anaomba kwa ajili ya haja za maombi. Another one prays for offerings. Na mwingine anaomba kwa ajili ya matoleo. And the preacher comes and prays. Na 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 mhubiri anakuja na kuomba. And he starts preaching. Na anaanza kuhubiri. After preaching he prays. Na akimaliza kuhubiri anaomba. And for you you don't pray. Na kwa wewe hujaomba. And you just go back home. Na unarudi nyumbani. When is God you are God? Lini Mungu ni Mungu wako? Atakuwa Mungu wako lini? That's why in message churches today ndio sababu katika makanisa ya ujumbe leo not pentecostals si wa pentecostals but message churches lakini makanisa ya ujumbe people don't pray watu hawaombi is only preachers who pray ni wahubiri tu wanaomba doing a religion for you wakifanya dini kwa ajili yako what if you want to confess something to god vipi kama unataka kukiri jambo fulani mbele za mungu do you know you sisters Unajua ni nyinyi wa dada if your husband has a problem kama mume wako anayo shida you begin to realize the way he behaves on the family altar unaanza unaanza kujua jinsi anavyojiadabisha kwenye kwenye madhabahu ya nyumbani au ibada ya nyumbani he begins to dodge he begins to say i'm tired i'm going to pray alone you anaza, know there is a problem anaanza kuwa mvivu na kupuuzia na kusema nimechoka naenda kulala unajua kuna shida because prayer kwa sababu maombi family altar kwenye ya familia will put you in the right spiritual temperature itakuweka katika hali ya joto sahihi yeah. ya kiroho it will make you repent itakufanya utubu repent before your wife utubu you 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 mbele ya kama umemkosea repent before your husband utubu mbele ya mke wako then you go and pray together hapo mnaenda kuomba pamoja The prophet used to even sing that song. Se, se, uh, prophet used to sing that song. Hata nabii na alikuwa akiimba nyimbo. Don't forget the family prayer. Usisahau maombi ya nyumbani. Jesus wants to meet you there. Mu, yesu anataka kukutana wewe pale. But these days, lakini siku hizi, you find the sisters praying with the children there. Unakuta dada anaomba na watoto kule. The brother is on his own ndugu yuko kwenye mambo yake there's something wrong kuna jambo fulani makosa the devil is killing the vine shetani anaua shamba la mzabibu that's why when there is a sickness ndio sababu wakati kuna when there is problems wakati kuna shida they don't hold their hands and pray hawashiki hawashikani mikono kuomba the first thing the woman says jambo la kwanza mwanamke anasema buy for me medicine Ninunulie dawa. Or take me to hospital. Nipeleke hospitalini. Jesus coming as number last. Yesu anakuja kama namba ya mwisho au chaguo la mwisho. Because you are now in the hospital and the condition is worsening. That's, that's when you begin to send prayer requests. 
ni kwa sababu uko uko hospitali na hali inakuwa mbaya ndipo unaanza kutuma kadi za maombi mm-hmm. trusting in the habyard than in the vineyard ukiamini katika shamba la miti shamba kuliko shamba la mzabibu i am not against medicine Siyo ki, siko kinyume na, na dawa I take children to hospital Napeleka watoto wangu hospitalini But no single child has ever told me that I'm sick take me to hospital Lakini hakuna hata mtoto mmoja amewahi kuniambia baba ninaumwa nipeleke hospitali Because they know Kwa sababu wanajua Our God heals Mungu wetu anaponya They always know Wanajua mara zote When they are sick Wakati wanaumwa Say daddy Anasema baba Pray for me I'm ni, sick Niombe naumwa That's what they know. Hicho ndicho anachojua. If it is to take it to hospital, it's me to decide. Kama ni kuwapeleka hospitali, ni mimi niamue. That's a family that has God. Hiyo ndiyo familia yenye Mungu. Where is God in our life? Mungu yuko wapi maishani mwetu? Is he the last one to come in our thoughts? Je, ni wa mwisho kuja kwenye nia zetu? Oh, is the number one. Au ni wa kwanza? First priority. Je, chaguo la kwanza. Is he having the preeminence? Je, ana utangulizi? Oh, is coming as a last resort. Au anakuja kama wa mwisho huko. Sasa specialist na daktari wameshinda tafadhali tuombe. Eh? Now we begin to remember God. Sasa anaanza kumkumbuka Mungu. Do you know that he's a jealous God? Je, unajua kama ni yeye ni mwenye wivu? You are remembering him to come number last. Unamkumbuka aje wa mwisho. Oh, he's number first. Au ni namba moja. Okay, time is coming. Oh, vema muda unakuja. Wakati unakuja. When there will be no buying, no selling, Hakuna no going to hospital, wala no this, no that. Wala kwenda hospitali hakuna hiki wala kile utafanya nini Blessed be the name of the Lord Jina la Bwana libarikiwe What about that disease that has no treatment Vipi kuhusu hili gonjo ambalo halina tiba You rather suffer Bora uteseke the wrath of the enemy uteseke hasira za adui because you are manifesting god ni kwa, kwa sababu unamdhihirisha mungu than suffer under his whims as a victim of weakness kuliko kuteseka katika viwango vyake kama kama mwanga wa uovu wake au udhaifu wako i remember since the year 2000 nami nakumbuka tangu mwaka 2000 There is a woman I prayed for when I was in Norway in 1990 I mean 2015. Kuna mwanamke nilimwambia nilipokuwa Norway mwaka 2015. She was born both dumb and blind. Alikuwa amezaliwa bubu na kipofu. Some of you have seen that testimony. Wachache wenu mmeona huo ushuhuda. So that time I prayed for women of leukemia about three of them. Wakati nili waombea wanawake wenye kisukari, wenye leukemia, wenye blood cancer cancer ya damu cancer ya damu and god healed them na mungu aliwaponya and the number of people including the pastor's son na baadhi ya watu akiwemo mtoto wa mchungaji and during that time na wakati huo that's the first time i i saw the death here ndio ndio mara ya kwanza niliona mkiziwi anasikia and we didn't even lay hands i was just saying lift up your hand and the mother lifted her hand na tulikuwa tulikuwa tatu wekee mikono nilisema tuinuani mikono yenu na mama akainua mikono yake and when we prayed i heard her screaming i didn't know what he was saying she was na, saying it in norwegian na na alipokuwa tukiomba nikasikia anapiga kelele sikujua anasema nini alikuwa anaongea ki, ki Norway and later on i heard she, her ears were opened na kile nilichosikia kwamba masikio yake yamefunguliwa so i prayed for this woman who was not able to sing and talk na nikaombea huyu mwanamke aliyekuwa hawezi kuona na kunena And, 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 and God held healed the hand started speaking and singing na Mungu akamponya akaanza kuongea na kuona and then she came in the year 2000 my place na akaja mwaka 2000 nyumbani kwangu and she was still blind na bado alikuwa kipofu 
Although she could now speak and sing. Inga alikuwa anaweza kuona na kunena. So I prayed for her. Kwa hiyo nilimwombea. In church on Sunday. Ka, kanisani uh, Jumapili. And I, I wanted the church to know that we are not just talking about rhetoric. Na nami sikutaka kanisa lijue kwamba tunaongea tu kuhusiana na na kwa kwa kuhamasisha tu. So she she said the person who prayed for me and I got the ability to speak. Asema yule mtu aliyeniombea nikapata uwezo wa kunena. He will pray again and I'll see. Ataomba tena na nitaona. And she had that ready hot faith. Na alikuwa na ile imani halisi takatifu. And remember this somebody who was born blind with eyes that are not developed. Na huyu mtu alizaliwa bila macho ambayo yameende yanaweza ya kuona. So after after preaching I prayed for her. Kwa baada ya kuhubiri nikamwombea. And we went inside the house. Na akaenda kwenye tukaenda kwenye nyumba. And she started complaining of terrible severe headache. Na akaanza kulalamika kwa sababu ya maumivu makali ya kichwa. And I told her na nikamwambia I don't know where the words came from. Sijui hata maneno yalitoka wapi. I said sister you know what? Nikamwambia dada unajua nini? God is now creating the optical nerves connecting your eyes to the brain. Nikasema Mungu sasa anaumba zile neva za optic kuunganisha ubongo wako na macho yako. And she was crying. Na alikuwa akilia. Too much pain, too much pain. Ah, maumivu makali, maumivu makali. And after 15 minutes. Na baada ya dakika 15. She screamed said, "I see." Akaanza kupiga kelele akasema, "Naona!" She saw light for the first time. Akaona mwanga kwa mara ya kwanza. Since she was born. Tangu amezaliwa. And she was 40 years. Na alikuwa miaka 40. And she was formerly in the church of brother Perry Green. Na alikuwa mara alikuwa mara ya mwisho kati ya kanisa la ndugu Perry Green. In Tucson, Arizona. Kule Tucson, Arizona. Now, sasa. You know what happened? Unajua kile kilitendeka. People started wondering. Watu wakaanza kushangaa. Can this happen within the message? Je, hili naweza likatendeka kwenye ujumbe? Who is brother Bayira? Ndugu Maira ni nani? And people came from around the world. Watu wakatoka ulimwenguni kote. They want to look at who is this Maira. Wakija kutazama huyu Maira ni nani? Who prayed for a person who was born blind? Aliyeombea mtu aliyezaliwa kipofu. I mean, I'm not special. Nika namaanisha si maalum mimi. That that doesn't make me conspicuous. Hiyo hali nifanye kuwa wa kimaalum. It's just Jesus is ready. Ni kwamba Yesu yu tayari. Who is what? Good thing it is I've seen the dead rise, I've Nime, seen the lame walk. Nimeona wafu wakifufuka, I've seen the cancers go. Nimeona cancer zikiondoka. As long as someone has got ready hot faith. Pop. Ili mradi tu kuna mtu mmoja ana imani nyekundu ya moto. I, I, I said I am not the one who healed that woman. Nikasema si mimi niliyemponya yule mwanamke. Her faith made her travel from Europe from Norway to here. Ya ilimfanya asafiri kutoka u, Ulaya, Norway mpaka hapa. And she got her healing. Na akapata uponyaji wake. Because she believed. Kwa sababu aliamini that God can do it. Mungu anaweza kufanya hilo. So we are not talking about a historical god. Kwa hatu nani kuhusu Mungu wa historia? No. Hapana. We have to prove that he is here. Lazima tuthibitishe kwamba yuko no. hapa. Let me tell you this. Hata niwaambieni hii. I've always said. Ni mara zote nimesema. I don't want to serve a god. Sitaki kumtumikia Mungu that I keep defending that he exists. Kwamba ni amena nakaa nikimtetea kwamba yupo. <laughs> He is not a, a dull stupid thing down there. Si jambo fulani la kijinga liko pale chini. He is the creator of the universe. Yeye ni muumbaji wa ulimwengu. He can create eyes Ana, where there are no eyes. Anaweza kaumba macho pasipo kuwa na macho. He can create you a new ovary. Anaweza akaumba ovary mpya ndani yako. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. He can take away that cancer. Anaweza kaondoa hiyo kansa. He can set you free. You are the one who is delaying. For him, he has already done it. 
He has already finished it. He has already paid for it. He has already paid for it. Glory to God. But to kwa mungu. Otherwise, Vingi how do we prove that he's the same? To tafibiti saje kwa mani wea ya yule. He is not just the same in saving people from sins. Hayuko tu yaya yule wakati anapokuwa watu kutoka zambini. The same word for saving is the same word for healing. Neno lile lile la kuokoa nafsi ni neno lile lile la kuponya. Sozo. Kwa hiyo the, the Greek word is sozo. Kwa katika neno la Kigreek ni sozo which means healed both physical and spiritually. Inaomaanisha kupona vyote kiroho na kimwili. So I saying kwa kile nini nasema you just have to tell the devil unapaswa kumwambia ibilisi this today is mine hiki leo mcha kwangu i take it ninachukichukua you cannot hold it again anymore uwezi kunishikilia tena i take it naichukua hiyo i possess it naimiliki i hold it naishikilia you are a liar wewe ni mwongo my god is the truth Mungu wangu ni kweli. The promise is a reality. Ahadi ni ukweli. Ni you are a fake one. Wewe ni yule wa, wa, bandia. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. Let me leave it at that. Hebu <laughs> niache hivyo namna hiyo. So we are here friends. Kwa hiyo tuko hapa marafiki. And we should know one thing. Lazima tujue jambo moja that certain hates and trembles at a church that brings him into present tense shetani anaogopa na anatetemeka mbele ya kanisa inayomleta yeye katika wakati huu otherwise we can continue preaching no problem vinginevyo tunaweza tukaendelea kuhubiri and i don't want to preach the gospel that makes the devil just seated sitaki kuhubiri injili inayomfanya ibilisi akae tu amen I am tired of that one. Nimechoka na hiyo. I want to preach when the devil is on his toes. Nataka nihubiri wakati shetani anasimamia vidole. Waiting for my command. Akisubiri. So now I say go. He runs away. Glory to God. Tukufu kwa Mungu. That is the church of God. Hiyo ndio kanisa la Mungu. That's where we are supposed to be. Hapo ndio tunapaswa kuwa. That promise is ours. Hiyo ahadi ni ya kwetu. That power is ours. Hiyo nguvu ni ya kwetu. That anointing is ours. Hiyo upako ni wa kwetu. That reality is ours. Hiyo uhalisi wetu ni wa kwetu. That, is, that God is ours. Hiyo Mungu ni wa kwetu. It is here. Yuko hapa. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is here. Yuko hapa. He wants you to receive it. Anataka uipokee hiyo. Glory. Utukufu. He is here. Yuko hapa. He wants to change you today. Anataka kukubadilisha leo. He is here. Yuko hapa. He wants you to go free. Anataka wende huru. He wants you to go free. Anataka wende huru. And you are ready to go free. Na uko tayari kwenda huru. You will go free. Utakwenda huru. You want to get your healing. Unataka kupata uponyaji. You take your healing. Utaondoka na uponyaji. He is here. Yuko hapa. Glory glory hallelujah Tukufu Glory hallelujah Tukufu hallelujah I am tired Nimechoka I am tired Nimechoka of telling the people Kwambia what that I've got the truth Kama na ukweli and yet the truth hata hivyo kweli has to set me free inapaswa kuniweka huru so if we have got the truth kwa hiyo kama nina kweli i claim my freedom ninadai uhuru wangu i claim my healing nadai uponyaji wangu i claim my power nadai nguvu zangu i claim my glory nadai utukufu wangu i want my strength nataka nguvu zangu i want my inheritance nataka urithi wangu i want my inheritance nataka urithi wangu i want the promise nataka ahadi No. Apana. God is not a liar. Mungu si mongo. The devil is a liar. Satan ndiye mongo. The word of God remains the truth. Neno la Mungu linadumu kweli. Glory, hallelujah. Tukufu, hallelujah. Can we raise up? 
Unaweza kusimama? I want you to speak to God now. Nataka unene kwa Mungu sasa. In your own words. Katika maneno yako mwenyewe. And tell him what you want. Na umwambie kile unataka. Speak to him now. Nena naye sasa. And tell him. Na umwambie. God. Mungu. Come and visit me. Jao unitembele. Come and revive me. Jao uniti u, Come and change me. Jao nibadilishe. Transform me. Nibadilishe. Start speaking to him now. Anza kumnenea sasa. Lord. Oh, in Jesus name. Bwana katika jina la Yesu. Coming before you at this juncture. Na kuja mbele zao katika kanisa hii. We together with your children, Lord. Pamoja na watoto wako. Wherever they are, Lord. Ambapo wewe ni Bwana. I know you are here. Najua uko hapa. God in your word of promise. Kulingana neno lako la ahadi. May you come down. Hebu uje chini. And open our eyes. Na ufungue macho open yetu. Our, our eyes, Lord. Na ufungue macho yetu Bwana. Bring it to our understanding, Lord. Iche katika ufahamu zetu. That we claim the promises. Na kwamba tudai ziwe ahadi. That we claim all the things, Lord. Kwamba tudai mambo yote Bwana. We know today. Tunajua leo. The devil is a liar. Kwamba Satan ni mungu. The devil cannot hold us anymore. Satan hawezi kutusikilia tena. Lord, I commit your children. Oh, Bwana tunatoa watoto wako. In the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. The glory of God come down. Hebu tukufu wa Mungu uje chini. The fire of God come down. Na mwanzo wa Mungu uje chini. And move in the life of your children. Na utembee juu ya watoto wako. Glory. Wa tukufu. Oh. May you quicken us. Oh, May you send your fire, send your power. Oh, tuma mato wako, tuma nguvu zako. 